Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. As Kate Middleton recovers from abdominal surgery, a source tells people, it does sound serious with the length of time she's taking, but she is in great hands and will have lots of care and support at home and is a fit young woman. I am sure she will bounce back. A source close to the royal household remarks, it is sensible to take the time, emphasizing the importance of proper recovery. That is a great example to the rest of us, and you're often told to get back to work as soon as possible, which can be damaging. It is good for all of us to see her taking the time, recovering properly, and then coming back. We can all learn from that. Royal biographer Robert Hardman adds, They are a modern royal couple. There would have been more delegation in the past. William doesn't want to leave it all to the nanny. Harry and Meghan are being criticised for the continued silence. Royal commentator Lady Colin Campbell told GB News, saying, All they need to do was make some public declaration, but they are not going to. They can exploit every situation as long as they don't make a public declaration. The whole thing stinks to high heaven. Joining the discussion, Royal commentator Phil Dampier suggested that the couple might be worried about health matters back in Britain. He commented, if they had made a public declaration, there would be a certain sympathy for them. There might have been private contact. I'm sure they are worried. They haven't made anything public, and I think that is the contrast. They are enjoying themselves and probably went to the premiere via a private jet. It does look like they are swanning about and enjoying themselves while there is real concern for many members of the royal family. Harry and Meghan's trip to Jamaica is being seen as yet another unforced error. Royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams told The Express, There is no doubt that with The Hollywood Reporter stigmatising them as losers, Harry and Meghan are in limbo. Their appearance in Jamaica was a surprise, but seemed more calculated to get attention during a difficult week for the royal family. It isn't an attempt to restart their careers. They currently have no careers in Hollywood. It was the second unforced error of the week. Talk TV's Mike Graham discussed the Aviation Awards. Graham said, look at where they've ended up. Harry ends up going along to a ridiculous ceremony and being given an award for being an aviation legend. Nobody can quite understand why. Then he ends up getting photographed with this kind of dodgy German prince. This has arguably made Harry look even more ridiculous than he already did. Royal commenter Kinsey Schofield replied, You are who you associate with, so if you are having pictures taken with fake royals, when you step down, you might look like a fake royal. In the news.co.au, Diana Elsa wonders, How has Harry sunk to this, to willingly make the roughly four-hour round-trip drive from his Montecito home to Beverly Hills so that he can receive a meaningless award during an evening of mutual ego masturbation and dried chicken breast mains, all in front of a crowd of wrinkle-free foreheads? We have just passed the fourth anniversary of Mexit, the day that Harry and Meghan channeled their inner Oppenheimer and dropped a homemade A-bomb on the Buckingham Palace back lawn. In those first days, weeks and months, it looked like they had the whole world, checkbooks open, tongues lolling at their feet. The biggest conundrum they seemed likely to face was going to be where to stay when they were convening their own working group at the UN, or which emoji to send Mackenzie, Bezos and Melinda Gates in their group chat. But my oh my, what has instead come to pass is far, far off course from the glorious vision of Davos jetting and such brave do-goodery that the Dalai Lama would be on the blower asking for pointers. The Duke and Duchess are the epitome of best intentions come a bit undone, their ambitions seemingly having been hobbled by the vicissitudes of having to do paying work and lacking the well called infrastructure of the palace. The problem of Harry these days is a bit like the 13th century when the King of Norway gave King Henry III a polar bear because gift cards hadn't been invented yet. The poor creature was kept at the Tower of London and would be taken for swims on a chain in the Thames. It hardly sounds like a charmed existence because the polar bear simply didn't belong paddling around upstream from the Palace of Westminster. Having been removed from its natural habitat, no one quite knew what to do with it. Palace entry will be right back. There is definitely a news drought with Kate out of the picture, and we'll see how the British tabloids deal with it. We find ourselves looking for stories about uninteresting people like Prince Edward or Camilla. Camilla's stories aren't as much fun as Harry's stories. On the Queen's podcast, she was asked whether she preferred Alice author Lewis Carroll or Hans Christian Andersen, who penned classics such as The Little Mermaid and The Ugly Duckling. The Queen's big controversial reply, It's an awful thing to admit, but I've never really liked Lewis Carroll. We can assure you that titling an episode, Meghan Markle attends Bob Marley movie in Jamaica, will get more downloads than one titled, Camilla doesn't like Lewis Carroll. 
One thing we do notice is that we're a week and a half into Kate's hospitalization and either nobody knows the story or for some reason they are choosing not to tell the story. Either scenario will be major news eventually. So in this Kateless world, having covered the boredom that is Camilla, we find ourselves looking up people like Beatrice. Pure Wow tells us Princess Beatrice popped up this week at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, to support her younger sister, Princess Eugenie, who was speaking on a panel. Her blazer of choice, this $50 cropped soft jacket from Zara, which is chic and a total steal. Perhaps Sophie Wersix can entertain us. Sophie visited the Harris Girls Academy to raise awareness of menstrual health issues. The Daily Mail reports that, as the largely female pupils discuss the question, what is a normal period, Sophie candidly revealed something of her own challenges as a senior working royal, telling the students, when you have heavy periods, worrying about when you stand up from a chair, that's the worst one. And with that, you can see we're out of royal news for the day. Kate has left a void. Get well soon, Princess Catherine. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or your app of choice. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times. <laughs>